What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. Good morning to some out there. Uh, it's the Earth Master here on the live stream on this beautiful Wednesday, July 27th, 2022 date. It's about 11.32 a.m. West Coast time here in California. Latest quake shows a 1.8 earthquake just off the coast here. Uh, looks like it could be hitting around the volcanoes in this region. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here on the USGS map showing the last 24 hours of earthquake activity. Of course, we had quite a big shaker over here around the Philippines yesterday. They have seen uh, quite a few aftershocks in the sequence of events as well. Looks like they've settled with a 7.0 magnitude earthquake uh, that was up and down all over the place yesterday, including uh, up to a 7.2. So a uh, pretty significant uh, earthquake did hear of some damages and unfortunate uh, fatalities as well. I appreciate all the feedback and the comments and the videos. Um, I do read every single one of them. So uh, things are uh, looking like they're going to continue for a little bit as far as aftershock activity goes in this region. But we are noticing further down to the southeast here. Uh, quite an uptick in this zone I was kind of telling you guys about here last night an area to watch uh, haven't seen too much westward pressure movement here but we are starting to see that uh, return movement from the Pacific plate kind of building up here along the Tonga Trench and the Kermadec Trench area uh, with quite a few earthquakes overnight and this morning including a 5.7 this one pretty deep down there uh, this might be a spot to watch considering we haven't seen any westward pressure movement. And when I talk about this westward pressure movement, i got to look at this area as a whole. I know the world is big, we're just a bunch of little ants crawling around on it, but these plates are huge and they're large in general, and they're kind of just floating around, if you will. If you really think about what's going on dynamically below our feet, uh, these plates are just kind of like, uh, oh, I don't know, floaties. I, I can't think of the word. But they're moving around slowly. Uh, they do build up pressure. And this is a general GPS map movement, uh, GPS coordinates. Uh, they place obviously GPS sensors all over the place and they can get a general direction of how far a plate is moving, which direction it's going, you know, and the accumulated slip rate uh, at subduction zones, which are the two arrows pointing together. The longer the arrow, the more movement that's taken place such as the shorter the arrow, uh, the shorter movement that's taken place here. Not a whole lot of buildup, but there is still movement with the plates here. So the Philippine plate sits right here in the red, at least on my side, it's kind of a light red color. That's the Philippine plate. And yesterday we seen that earthquake strike within that Philippine plate and the area around the Eurasia plate that's in the green right here, kind of a darker green. This is a major zone for buildup. As you notice, we got arrows pointing directly in this region from the northwest and an arrow pointing directly in this area um, from the southeast. A super huge accumulated stress area that sees often a lot of earthquake activity. Doesn't take a whole lot of time to build up strain here in this region when we see these arrows pointing right at each other. Um, so the general plate movement here of the west uh, to the, towards the west and northwest, the Pacific Plate. You guys see that? It's been building up there for a little while. So when this plate moves, like it did yesterday, it does kind of add some further strain down here in this area, along the Kermadec Trench area. You gotta remember as a whole, got some, got some adjustment right here with the northern portion of the Pacific Plate. What, what's gonna happen, right? There's obviously gonna be some adjustment and the best bet would be right down here in this area uh, where another subduction zone is called the, uh, well, we got the uh, Kermadec Trench and the Tonga Trench and the Hikarangi subduction zone uh, there around the New Zealand area. So that's kind of where we're seeing all this back building of pressure following yesterday's movement uh, here along the trench area. I think we need to watch that pretty closely. Here's another map shows you the uh, subduction zones there in the uh, arrows. Uh, and there's quite a few of them. But just remember this plate direction uh, can, can kind of, it can't forecast earthquakes, but it can look at areas um, far as like movement goes when we see a large quake. What would, what, what could we expect next? You know, could it be building up further to the west? Possibly. But after thinking about the update last night, uh, this region right here was definitely on my mind. Uh, and that's continuing today. We're going to watch that pretty closely for some larger scale movement. I don't think a couple fives 
uh, is that big of a deal, but it could be building up to something much bigger in this region. This area does see some sevens and eights, uh, and they can be pretty deep as well. Uh, we have noticed some changes at the Big Island of Hawaii as well. A lot of activity coming in after my update last night uh, with some uh, movement around the Lohi Seamount. Had a couple fours out here, including a 4.6, which is pretty large for this area. Uh, it's the under, underwater volcano, submarine volcano out here, the Lohi Seamount. Uh, also seen some movement prior to that up in the Pahala region. Now, earthquake activity is not uncommon. Obviously, there's a, a swarm that's been going on since the 60s in this area. Um, but the size of it was a little bit larger than we're used to in this region and specifically down here as well. Looking at the all magnitudes map here shows a large area, broad region of earthquake activity. I think this has to do with a lot of magma movement possibly down below. Now the hazard notification system from the USGS last night did put out a notification in regards to the volcanic activity there at uh, the Loihi Seamount. This was put out yesterday. I haven't seen any updates uh, this morning. But uh, on Tuesday, July 26, a magnitude 4.6 earthquake occurred uh, beneath the Loihi Seamount. Uh, looks like the depth was about seven miles, which is 11 kilometers below sea level. Uh, this earthquake closely followed the magnitude 4.3 earthquake that occurred about 30 miles north, uh, less than an hour earlier. And that's around the Pahala region where that 4.3 struck. Uh, the earthquake had no apparent impact on either Mauna Loa or Kilauea volcanoes yet. But we know some stuff is moving around down there. Definitely getting uh, pretty, pretty busy down below the surface. Uh, the second quake is a relatively shallow earthquake that occurred in the vicinity of the earthquake swarm that took place uh, within this region here from July 16th to July 18th. It's Loihi Seamount. Uh, and may represent stress release related to this event, but I don't know about that. Uh, there is no sign that this is related to renewed mag magmatic activity. It is also unusual to have two moderate earthquakes occur so close in time and proximity, but there is no apparent relationship between the two events. I doubt that. I highly doubt that. According to this guy, the scientist in charge, Ken Han. Okay, so I, I don't think it's just a coincidence that there's two uh, earthquakes like that within the short time of each other and again you have to look regionally all this activity comes after the uh, the seven pointer in the Philippines yesterday on a broad scale I think there's something definitely building up down here in this area around the Lohi Seamount Pahala region uh, we haven't seen the effects yet but watch closely folks if this swarm continues we should be seeing these earthquakes get larger if there is some volcanic activity about ready to take place uh, 4.6 at the underwater uh, volcano is not normal, that's for sure. So watching this area along the Big Island pretty closely. Um, very minimal movement up here along the Kuril Kamchaka Trench, 4.6 and a 4.2. Uh, some of this area had seen some deeper movement uh, earlier today, but uh, no large scale activity yet within this region. Um, Again, this is an area to watch pretty closely. And, um, yeah, because it's been awfully, awfully quiet here. I was looking at my phone. Sorry about that, folks. I um, had an important text come in. Uh, West Coast activity. Again, a lot of times when we see some deeper movement, some large-scale movement here to the west and areas around the Pacific Plate, the Philippine Plate, the adjacent plates, it tends to relieve activity here along the west coast. And that kind of is ringing true overnight and this morning. Um, there's not a whole lot of renewed earthquake activity in the western portion of the states here. Things kind of just tapering off a little bit. We've seen it after the uh, large Japan earthquake back in 2011. Um, it completely almost dropped off um, the swarms and activity we had been seeing off the coast of Oregon as well. Um, so it's just that it's that teeter-totter effect I talk about a lot when we see activity here to the west. Things kind of uh, toned down here along the, uh, the states and vice versa. So I think we might be uh, 
at least in a temporary pause of any unusual activity here along the west coast there's always going to be microquake activity that's a given because there there's always movement right there's always pressure building up but as far as that large scale activity that can cause swarms and uh, larger earthquake activity looks like it's dying off right now um, here along the western states not a whole lot to report um, these earthquakes here from yesterday along the southern end of the Cascadia haven't seen any further activity uh, also up here around Mount Shasta uh, older movement we did see one renewed earthquake up here to the northeast of Mount Shasta 1.7 at 11 kilometers had a little swarm just a little bitty earthquake sequence there south of Mount Shasta yesterday but uh, overall things just kind of a uh, uh, a little quiet out here today same for the uh, southern plains the texas region not a whole lot going on nothing going on throughout the eastern portion of the country last night uh, we did see way up here in new york a 2.5 that one uh, again coming late overnight about five kilometers there looks like it's just outside of the plattsburgh area but uh, that's about it showing up there on the map for this region. South America has gone awfully quiet as well. Notice that. A lot of pressure. you got to remember this pressure movement plate right here gives a pretty good indication. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had some larger scale movement here. A couple, I think we had a 6 and some other 5s and a little swarm right here. This is a divergent uh, ocean boundary plate out here. Separated. Separation here. You see the arrows facing away from each other. That means this plate boundary is kind of spreading apart. When that happened, we've seen further activity kind of ramp up here along the South America region. And that would make sense, right? The arrows are kind of pointing towards this subduction zone. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it kind of makes sense to watch these arrows and the GPS uh, systems. I hear a train. It's perfect timing, right? <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't blare too loud over the, the uh, microphone here. But uh, yeah, so in, like I said, an area to watch pretty closely around this region, considering the Pacific Plate movement as a whole, definitely this area. So we'll see, uh, see how it plays out. Um, Yellowstone National Park, haven't seen too much activity. In fact, this is some older data coming in here. Not for sure what's going on with this. They haven't updated here in almost a day. Um, so little on the odd side. Um, let me see here if I got, there's a couple different um, sites I can check for Yellowstone. I'm not seeing it right now. The University of Utah is a good site to check out when it comes to the uh, seismograph station. So uh, let's see if I can get that to pull up here. They may be having the same issue. Let me check here. You got to go to the uh, monitoring uh, live seismograms here. And from here, you can click on many different seismograph stations all throughout Utah, portions of Wyoming, and up here around Yellowstone National Park. So I'm going to click on one, see what uh, see what's going on here. It may just be, yeah, this is a, so this looks like a whole network-wide error. Uh, this is still showing from the previous UTC date, um, I think, right, 727? Hold on a second, let me double check here, make sure, stand by for a second. Seven twenty-seven. Now this is about right. Yeah, seven twenty-seven. We're almost uh, into the seven twenty-eight time frame. So yeah, it just looks up really weird. I'm not seeing the. Uh, normally, when we see a large earthquake, we'll see the signature from that earthquake, even though it's like a thousand, couple thousands of miles away. A seven-pointer would definitely show up here on the graphs as far as s waves go and i don't see it kind of odd little on up oh, trying to think yeah maybe they're a little bit right here but okay anyway far as earthquake activity goes um i don't see any there's not a whole lot popping up here on the map but uh i don't know something looks weird the date is different the date is correct but these graphs almost look like they're the same as yesterday so i'll have to look into that dig a little bit deeper i don't think they would do something like that try to try to fool the public i doubt it but i'll get back to it and uh, report on that a little bit later uh solar weather activity let's go ahead and recap that real quick see what we got going on 
Uh, looks like we had another sea flare pop off um, yesterday, or actually overnight. Not a big one. Of course, it seems as though these uh, flares are getting active as they turn away from Earth. Um, we did have a C8.7 uh, day or so ago, but that was from a sunspot that's way on the western limb here and out of view. As far as Earth-directed stuff, um, there's a couple sunspots that are kind of growing that will be rotating into view here. But uh, there's not a whole lot of potential here for any major flaring going on um, from any of these sunspots. They're looking pretty, uh, pretty uh, quiet for now. 3067 is the newest named sunspot here on the disk. We'll watch that in coming days, see if it wants to do anything. But uh, yeah, it's been kind of quiet right now as far as the uh, solar activity goes. All right, guys, have a good day. Let me fix the globe back um, again. I would definitely watch this activity along the Kerberdeck Trench, New Zealand region, up into the Tonga, Fiji area. So we'll see how that uh, plays out, folks. Have a good day. We'll chat at you a little bit later on tonight with the update. Peace out.